So good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here today with the creator and the cast of Then What Happened. Um, so I guess, you know, Theo, we'll just start right with you as the creator. Um, how did this get started? It's actually a really funny story how it got started. Uh, Marco, to my right, um, was actually, or is still actually, still married. Um, to <laughs> to one of my one of my best one of my best friends. Oops. Okay. And um, they're doing dealing with whatever they're dealing with now um, in planning the dissolution of the marriage. And um, he ran. I ran into the gym. And okay. At the time, I, I thought he was still living down in San Diego. Uh, and in actuality, he was planning on moving back up to Los Angeles. And okay. So that's how we ran into each other, and he had mentioned to me something about uh, my website and some of the some of the material he'd seen on my reel. I said, oh, that's those are things that I've written. And a friend of mine, Ray, who is, is a, a DP, he filmed it for me, shot it for me. Um, and it's helped me put together just this really nice reel. He's like, we should do something together. Nice. You write it, we can film it together. And I was like, you know, it was like towards the end of February and I was going to Miami in the beginning of March. And so I was going to be in Miami for weeks partying. So I... <laughs> Doing something, filming something was not on my mind at sure. all. Uh, but he was very persistent about it. And it got to the point where like, he would text me, we need to do this, like, let's do it soon, right away. And I was like, I can't afford to do it, I'm going to be in Miami. He's like, I'll pay for it now, you can pay for the next one. I was like, dude, just pump the brakes. I'll, I'm willing to do it, but I don't want to do it right now. I'm not, I, I'm not focused on it. Well, anybody that sits around and doesn't do stuff, that's not how successful people are made and da da da. And he was just so, he was just so irritating to me. I just got, I, I sent him a message and I was like, look, great idea, but I'm not going to do it now. So stop bothering me about it. I'm done. That's it. And <laughs> and I, I, I had been seeing this therapist for a while, actually, and I. I brought it up in my therapy session because she was talking about, we were talking about my career and like um, opportunities coming to me and how I could create my own opportunities and I was never one of those people that was like, I'm going to write my own thing, do my own thing. I just felt like I was one of those that would go in and be a really good actor and book the job and that would like take, get my career going. Sure. Um, and that particular day, that session that I had with her uh, and, and his persistence, you know, it really kind of stuck with me and I thought, you know what? At least let me just sit down with him and like discuss this because yeah. he had already written something. He wrote, he wrote something himself and he sent it to me and I read it. He's like, "We're gonna film this," and I was like, "Okay, okay, we'll film it, whatever." I'm <laughs> um, just blowing him off. And I started thinking about that idea more. And then I thought of um, Chris over here to my left, who I met um, two or three years prior to that. Um, we had done uh, this promo shoot for uh, Chelsea lately for the Sochi Olympics. Mm -hmm. So I met him on set, and we. Um, become workout buddies and then we had become friends and um, I thought to myself, okay, I like what he wrote but let's do a scene where it involves more people because I'm sure he'd like to get on the band right on board too mm -hmm. with that and it would save us money. Like, it'd be a hundred bucks each a pop. It'd be super cheap. So, sure. I could write a scene with three of us in it and that's kind of how this whole thing came together. So, we met one morning for uh, coffee mm -hmm. and well, we all decided to maybe just take it a step further and like actually write something full length and that's how the whole idea came about. So let's talk a little bit about it. What is then what happened? <laughs> well, basically, basically, over this past year, for me, I, I came to some um, personal growth and realization about just my career and how I want to be perceived in my career and the roles that I go out for and things like that. And I just decided that I want to do something where I just be myself. Mm -hmm. And so with me being myself, which is interesting because my character name is Derek, which is not my name, but their character names <laughs> stayed the same, and I don't know why that happened, just kind of did. <laughs> but I wanted something where I just wanted to just, I could just be myself. Sure. And so the character is based on me. It's not all me, but sure. it's totally based on me. Marco is based on Marco. Chris is based on Chris. Like, the little small little things in there. Like, he pointed out to me the other day, he's like, I'm glad you've been paying attention, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'm not all this time, you know? Because it's like all the little details about the character is like, you know, goal. Yes. It's like, it's based on these guys. And so I'm like, okay, our characters are us. We're who we are. We have this great chemistry with each other. We like are cracking jokes with each other. Um, it's all in good fun, all in love. And I'm like, but, but what is the whole idea behind it? I'm like, well, you okay, so what if... I don't remember, I think either Marco or Chris came up with the storyline of the pilot about... Um, me needing, a, me needing a date. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one it was. But then I was like, okay, well, what if um, it's these three guys and they're all in different phases of their lives? Like maybe Chris ha is about to get 
he's about to get married, or and maybe uh, Marco's going through a divorce, like things that are true, sure. aside from him about to get married because he can't find a date to save his life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, like real things that are actually going on in our lives, and what if it's just exploring those different um, times, those time periods in the relationship? Like, I got dumped, and I'm relying on these guys as my friends to kind of help, like, prop me back up. Mm -hmm. And in the process of me getting dumped, I'm having to move in with them to try to like, reorganize my life and get my life back together. And, um, it's just this dynamic of like, okay, you have two straight men, one who's not naturally born in this country, so he has a whole other thing going on with sure. like, you know, his culture, uh, his uh, cultural identification coming over here and like trying mm -hmm. to figure things out here, and then this guy who's like a farm farm kid from the Midwest kind of a situation who's all American, football, this, that, and the other, apple pie, and then, you know, you have, you have this black gay guy, you know, yeah. you know, gay character who's... In, you know, dealing with, you know, you're dealing with race issues there as well. Sure. Sexual, sexual orientation, you're dealing with a lot of things. And I just thought it would be interesting to kind of explore those things, but like in a funny way. Right. One thing I think is really amusing is, though he's the character that's still a minority, we're the ones that are kind of wild. And he's the one that gets almost like the, the straight character of the three of us, most of the time it feels like. Sure. You know, which is interesting, I think. Almost like your mother sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, um, uh, a gentleman I interviewed with say the other day, uh, truth is stranger and sometimes way more entertaining than fiction. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of goes along with what you're talking about of taking some of these real life pieces of yourself and there being true comedy in that, even if it's not comedy, you know, in your everyday life, but bringing that into the character. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, when, when, when we met with Theo, you know, uh, way back when he, Initially, I had a concept of that idea. Uh, I think we all knew right away we were onto something, you know, because yeah. we were so busy uh, in our everyday lives chasing the gig, whatever that is. And you're you're uh, taught your whole life, you know, uh, your success is going to be at the mercy of somebody else deciding that, you know. Sure. So you don't start thinking, you know, oh my God, let's just create it ourselves, let's do it ourselves. That's way out of our league. But the reality is, it isn't, mm -hmm. you know. And then we realize. We came together, and, and I mean, just the three goons of us sitting at breakfast. When you looked at us, you, you realized, okay, these guys are just something about them is just different. I don't know. If it's yeah, even that it's first conversation, we were loud and obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Back and forth already, it was like already obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. Moment number one. It's just a big circus. It really is, and you know, there's so much passion and warfare in in, in in all of what we do individually, anyway. You know, and um, so when you brought up this idea of basing basing something that's that's that that's kind of barred from who we really are mm -hmm. and incorporating that into you know we realize right away okay the idea itself is better than a lot of stuff that we're that we're faced with every day as it is you know and and uh, then then you know came the, the part of the hard work of putting it all together and making it happen but but when you're right away when we're hanging out just that chemistry mm -hmm. and and i mean i mean look at us you know how can you how can you not Love this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty cool to see to, to pretty cool and exciting to like what you're writing more than what you're going to audition for at CVS or at one of those other big studios. Just we go into those all the time, and sure. I'm like, what we're doing is is better than what I'm going to read for. Right. <laughs> no, nobody's casting us for anything. We're we're pretty much the rejects all the time. So I think we just kind of want to. Oh, yeah, well, I am this. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it was at the Matt Damon point. Let's just go write this, you know, what ourselves and, and just, just like Matt Damon. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're like going, going, back, <laughs> like going back to the story too is something that I really want to explore. Is like being a gay man. It's this whole idea of like, you know, straight guys and gay guys can't really like be friends because the straight guys are always worry that the gay guys are right. trying to move on them. So like, this is uh, like these are platonic relationships right. like it's not I'm trying to convert you because sure. uh, you know I think that you're an attractive person like I guess I see that you're like an attractive man but that doesn't mean I want to like I want to get your pants yeah, right. gay, you know what I mean? No. I knew you too well. No, that's that, 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 that was something also that I really wanted to explore too and I think what also spoke to me about you know this idea of working is the fact that after we had that meeting I literally was done writing the first script, like uh, the pilot script. What was it like? Less than a week after that. Literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like so, and obviously so. changes happened after that point. Sure. We had, we had a consulting producer that we worked with in the very beginning, um, who um, I did cast in her show, and she has this uh, very popular show on on the internet. Uh huh. Um, and so I like 
really wanted to pick her brain about things, mm -hmm. and so I gave her the script, and she helped me with the budget, and we made some changes to the script based on what you know she thought, and you know it was just this collaborative thing, sure. you know, and got us to this point, and and here we are today. I you know I just want to touch on that again, Theo. I think that that is really important. I mean, clearly this is comedy. Mm -hmm but you are bringing in an element I think is very important too, which is this perception that a gay man can't just be platonic friends with straight men. Like, to, to be able to have those close relationships, you know, and people understand that it's, that's... And our characters are almost too comfortable with them. Like, uh -huh, you know, right. it's, like he's, it's like he's just another dude. Which is sure, like, we don't, that's wonderful. He walks in his underwear, he sees us vulnerable, he sees yeah. us more, more pissed off, or more excited, or, yeah. you know, he sees like, we don't even, Register that he's that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is kind of cool. I also think, you know, I think to us it was important to also push that boundary a little bit too because um, there's so much, uh, uh, you know, safety on TV and so much of that political correctness cancer right. and everything. And here you have, you know, a foreigner that wants to be American so bad and a gay black dude and then, you know, as white as it gets over there. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, it's just. I think it's something that maybe Hollywood can eat a little dose of, of you know, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the three of us is usually what you wouldn't want, and, and so to me, if I'm part of something, it has to have a certain aura about it of, of change. I don't care if it's changed for the worse or for the better, but it's got to have an impact. Otherwise, you know, you just you might as well just go to another Bud Light audition and, and right. you know, pick your straw, you know. It's working with the diversity issue that so many people are talking about in the industry right now, and which is a awesome. real issue. Yeah. Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, know, I know personally, but I think the, um, the last time I, I, I can think of, there being like, let's say a gay character who was not, you know, would see, uh, portrayed as typically gay would be like uh, the comedy um, Happy Endings. Mm -hmm. I think that was an, like an ABC show that lasted for a couple seasons. Um, and he was like a gay guy, but he was like a bro gay guy, but it was a white guy, you know? It's like, yeah. we don't see a lot of, um, <laughs> People of color, sure. um, or gay, uh, gay characters of color on television, like, yeah. very often in the type of role that I have created for this particular character, and right. how I'd like him to be seen and how I'd like him to be portrayed. Yeah, minority. <laughs> 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 Two times minority. Who's more minority, him or me? <laughs> Two times. So, Marco, I, I do want to touch a little bit with each of you on um, your character. <laughs> Can you talk? Marco, can you talk a little bit about Marco? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Mar Marco's kind of uh, he based the character. Uh, uh, the foundation is really based on who I really am, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you know he took like the best comedic parts out of that and the most uncomfortable parts mm -hmm. and and turned it into into the Marco that you see. And then what happened, you know? Right. Uh, and and then what happened? I'm a I'm a realtor. I'm a really schlimy realtor, you know. Okay. I'm the kind of guy who uses. A client's house to go hook up with a girl, kind of a. I uh, got it. And, yeah. And you know, then take you know uh, my friend's Porsche that's in the shop and go out on a date, pretend it's mine, kind of a right. thing. So it's super funny, but I think you also see a certain uh, vulnerability there too, because you know I'm trying real hard uh, uh, to 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 make something happen out of my life. You know, okay. yeah, I take certain things for granted. You know, and um, Marco, the character Marco is a guy that loses, but he's not a loser. Okay. Okay. So he 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 he, 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 he gets tough breaks, but always rebounds and, and kind of always falls on his feet. And I think sometimes he doesn't even know how. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then uh, he gets into a safety zone, and with because I live with 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 Chris's character, and uh, uh, so this guy breaks up with his boyfriend and now moves in with us. You know, for the dumb by his boyfriend. Dumb by his boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and he moves in with us for the time being, and you can imagine, you know. Uh, you know, a, a Eastern European Serbian guy coming from a conservative family in a dictatorship uh, to like living with a black gay guy. Right. So it's it's just it's just beautiful. So there's just this melting on and, and, and just this boiling on, on the pot just trying to sustain that whole thing. You right. know? So you got Bud Light in in, in boxer briefs with black gay super <laughs> over here. So uh, and the rest I think you can pretty much Guess so. Uh, the character is brilliant in the sense that he really compliments the other character, mm -hmm. and and you know it's just there's a certain thing that he's looking for, but I sometimes wonder if he's just kind of like that dog that chases the cat in front of him and wouldn't even know what to do with it if he caught it. You Got know it. I mean? so, yeah. And and he probably never will. And I, can, I think that's kind of what makes him interesting. Yeah. And what about you, Chris? Can you share a little me about Chris? Uh, <laughs> is that what's the question? <laughs> Uh, uh, same same thing. Uh, the character is, has all a lot of my own 
personal little intricacies, being a big musical theater person and mm -hmm. little quirky things I like to do and the kind of women I even like, mm -hmm. which is really all of them, but I had a phase <laughs> where I had a lot of ethnic girls in my life. So the character that he's in love with is he's always had this one beautiful ethnic chick, like mixed mm -hmm. chick, and he can never get a hold of her. Same, same kind of deal. He's after this, uh, he's in a dog chasing a carrot, which I've never seen that before. I think a dog chasing a bone and a dog chasing a carrot. But anyway, he's a He said, I thought he said carrot. I said carrot, I think. Well, you're chasing a carrot. That's how you're doing it. So I was like, wait, foreigners. Dogs only carrot chasing. He's out here because he wants to be an actor and a singer, but mainly he wants to be a just dramatic. He thinks he's like Celine Dion or something out there. Which I do like Celine Dion. So that makes perfect sense. Um, and if he were to actually. He's not unhappy. He loses, just like you said, he loses all the time. He never gets quite what he wants, but he it does, doesn't seem to stop them or they don't seem to really entirely notice. Right. They may get frustrated, but they never really stop going toward, even as they're, I think it's funny, as we're now still in these characters in their late 30s, and they've been doing this for a while now since they got out of college, and they're still chasing that carrot. And yeah. if they actually got their dream to come true, I, I think he's right, but they may not know how to even handle it. Right. Um, but they're, yeah, all the little intricacies and stuff. Um, uh, are very, uh, we're both, him, Marco and I are very outlandish. And even though he, he's the, the character of the, the double minority and all that stuff that you would think would be the, you know, the, the Will and Grace kind of guy, sometimes, you know, even though my guy's kind of the glue between them, that kind of holds them together, I'm often left field doing crazy stuff, and he is sometimes too, and he's just focused with his therapist getting his life together. So it's right. kind of interesting, you'd think that we would be like the more, or maybe my character would be the more like, he is a very motherly sometimes, mine is, but he's kind of out there, Doing this stuff too. Mm. We're both like satellites <laughs> doing weird stuff. Right. And um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what's making it, but it's all very honest to the character. Sure. It's not like we're trying to do it to be funny. Right. You know, we all kind of want something and we're trying to get it, and it just happens to be that they're, it's really quirky, weird stuff, so I don't swore there. Yeah. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that's we, okay. that we want. You know, so. It, it makes the dynamic even, you know, more, more interesting when you know, uh, when you throw in him into you know because you know we have our routine and here comes now this black gay guy who's dumped by his boyfriend and, and finds himself in a completely new situation sure and so i think you know us two confronted with that just you know uh you can imagine well, this makes for a great dynamic i know but i don't think his character expected to be i mean it's even in, you know um, the episode comes out it, his our reaction to him i think even catches him off guard which is very interesting yeah he, we don't react and uh, except the way he expects us to, not okay. that way at all. But like, right. yeah, our reaction to him and our, our our bringing him in is not what he expected. Okay. You know? And I think that would that's going to be a neat surprise to the audience too. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And so Theo, you already touched a little bit about Derek. Right? Yeah, I, I feel like now I'm mean, sitting with these guys and we're we're talking about this more, having it out, we're talking it out. Um, I feel <laughs> like um, Derek, Derek, and Chris are more like the mom and pop to like Marco. You know what I mean? Like, in, in certain situations, because I feel like, you know, yeah, in the beginning you see Derek and you see that he's kind of this, this like, lazy guy who just sits at home all day on the sofa eating donuts and watching the William show, like, and not having a job, getting sure. employment. But he still has, even though he's in that position, he still kind of carries himself in a way of, like, I feel sometimes that he's, like, better than those around him, slightly, mm -hmm. in a way. And so he's very hard on these guys about their behavior and things that they do, because he feels like, you know, he's a little bit above that because mm. he's, you know, like, just in a different arena. Mm -hmm. And we, we think about, like, for me personally, when I think about, like, gay culture and, like, um, you know, just gay society, it's, like, it's always, like, this image that certain guys want to portray of themselves. Sure. They, how they want to be seen in public, but behind closed doors, they're like a mess. And, those, <laughs> and that's kind of the situation with, with Derek, I think it is. So okay. When he's, with, when he's with these two and... They do something stupid, like really dumb, like Marco getting drunk, or like you know, at, at this uh, charity event where I told him, you know, keep it together and don't act like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Like people will, people are gonna see me, and like, and I can't show up to this event alone because then people are gonna see that I don't have a date, and they're gonna think I can't get a date, and I look pathetic. So Ugh. I have to convince one of these guys, I want, I want Chris to take me, and then I end up having to deal with this one taking me, and then he <laughs> does exactly what I tell him not to do. Again, he's in this weird transition in his life where he has to rely on a really good friend and an acquaintance from years ago mm -hmm. uh, where he thought he was at the point in his life where he had it made. Like he mm. was like lounging around at home and watching TV. He was like a house husband. Got it. Until, 
you know, right. everything just, just fell. You know, one thing that, that intrigues me about the show is that it touches a lot on that, that keeping up appearances thing, you know, that we have to do in everyday life. He mentioned that the gay community and how they are up front and behind the scenes, but we are all like, like that, you know, we all uh, have to put on that, I feel like every day, you know, you wake up, you have to put on that mask for the day. Sure. And, you know, and, and are you the gazelle or the lion? One has to run faster than the other sure. for the day, you know. And, you know, then you come home and you kind of like yourself. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it touches, I think, on those aspects of, of, of our characters and people in, in, in life in general, of how we have to be to society, especially nowadays, where everything is so sensitive, you know, mm -hmm. um, lifestyle-wise or religion-wise or political, whatever it is, sure. you're always like walking on this, these eggshells. When you see these three characters that are so opposite on, on the everyday life and then they come home and you see them how they really are. Right. And it's just a shell shock, you know what I mean? It breaks the preconceived ideas that are out there, like how they are when they're in their other personal space. Right. Totally, you know, and, and I, I think that's, the, it, it just pushes that boundary which I love to push because yeah. I love to, to make people uncomfortable and, 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 and I love being made uncomfortable too mm -hmm. because otherwise you kind of, you, you get know, too in your box. So if you're living in the middle, you're kind of missing out on, on, on it all, you know. And, yeah. and I think, you know, he did a good job when he created that to, to listen, shoot, shooting some of that stuff is really uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, you're sitting there, you know, with your, with your butt <laughs> out and your, your period out and it's like, you know, and, and then he comes in and calls you out on it and vice versa. So there, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, you got to be willing to, to, to be made uncomfortable and, sure. and in a good way. You His know characters have no shame quite often, all three of them. Yeah. People who have no shame quite often. <laughs> And I think a good show will do that. Yeah. A good show, uh, uh, comedy or drama, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you know when you walk away from something that, that you feel like, okay, this, in a certain way, kind of mm, move me, whatever you want to call it. And, and I think this does that. It, it's because when you feel it on set, and, you know, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you'll also feel it past the screen, you know. Sure. Um, and of course, we want to, you know, um, make people think differently about certain things. Sure. And maybe even about certain people. But also, we just purely want to make people laugh and entertain them. You know, right. and maybe you see something in one of us that you, you see in yourself. Sure. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do not. No. <laughs> so, so, so what's next? Where, where are you at? Well, um, actually right now we are in post-production, yep. um, we have had the opportunity to see a first assembly cut of the pilot, and Great. we were all very, like, it's really pretty. We were very pleased with it. Yeah. So that, not um, just like the, the acting and the directing and all that, it looks really good. Oh. Like, it's it looks very pro. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 a great yeah. uh, director and photographer, so um, it, that's what we're, we're dealing with right now. Okay. Um, we have a few more ends to see. Uh -huh. um, and then after that, we're, I mean, we're, we're in the process as well of just coming up with a strategic plan to get it out there sure. to the right person and the right people. Right. They can um, make those decisions. Um, yeah. They can help us uh, to move this thing forward. So you have the pilot in post. Um, do you have other episodes already sort of in the works in terms of written? Uh, well, we do. I've, yeah. I've, I've written. Um, Four more. Okay. So now we have a total of five. Got it. Um, I have a friend that does a stand-up comedy. Two friends that actually do stand-up comedy, uh, who both wanted to write episodes. So I, I oh, sat wonderful. down with them. I gave them the treatment so they could see how I, I, I see it. Yeah. Um, they've they've uh, read the pilot episode. They haven't seen the actual footage yet. Right. Um, I'd like to share that with them. But um, so they're in, they're they're asking me questions. Would Derek do it? Would, would would Marco do it? I'm like Marco. Yes, he would do anything. <laughs> Finances, but our friends reaching out to contacts, social media, background. We were able to pull a good group of people together through things we've worked on in the past, or mm -hmm. people we've worked. I mean, even the cast, we were calling people we knew. They were bringing in people they knew. Mm -hmm. You know, you send out emails. To everyone you know that's successful. I mean, you know, I mean that's kind of was my philosophy when I first started. 
and said, hey, can you take a look at this, what do you think? Uh, if anyone would be interested in, well, <laughs> finance would be one thing, but also working on it, sure. or work for a certain amount, can I see the real, can you send it to here, and I'll, and I'll pass it on to, and that's how we bumped into a lot of people, you know, including, including our, our director, and then that parlayed into our cinematographer, which parlayed into our editors, just mm -hmm. from people's connections, which is, it's kind of a nice little microcosm of the show, because the show is about connections and relationships, and that's kind of how we got this all done, too, was through a lot of great connections and relationships right. also. It's all a great team effort, and, and uh, um, it, I think it speaks to what is created for people to buy in like that and wanting to be part of it. Um, uh, th that says a lot about, I think, the, the quality of, of, of what, what you're doing. Because people will do certain things for money, but long-term longevity, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I won't. <laughs> they sit next to a black gay guy here. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just actually pretty amazing to think that, I mean, the three of us just sat down at the end of February, like, this, we've come this far since just sitting out at that table wow. at the end of February and right. getting to this point of now, the beginning of August. Yeah. It's, it's, it was written, it's shot, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's in post, you know, so. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 Now the formula is laid down, if we were to continue, we'd be, we'd be much more fluid. Sure. You know, we've got the blueprints there. The building the infrastructure is really the hardest, isn't it? I mean, you know, after that, it's, it's, it's momentum and, and, uh, but, uh, I, I think that people will be, uh, generally, uh, They'll generally like what it is, the, the message of, of the show, and that ultimately is the most important thing because it pushes certain boundaries that I just think are way, way overdue in Hollywood. Right. Um, I love I love what you said earlier, Theo, about you feel like there's probably something in it for everybody that they can identify with, mm -hmm. whether it be, geez, I, I'm a little like this character in this way, or it be, huh, how would I feel if this person came into my world, in my, in my space, right there. I think also for... For Derek in this pilot episode, anyway, he starts to feel a little bit more of his own value and self worth hmm. at the end of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know what it is. Ultimately, when you think about it, we're all looking for love and acceptance in all these uh, faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Love in all the wrong places. And in the end, we, we find it with with the with the ones who would think are are the losers in our life turn out to be the winners in our sure. life. You know what I mean? And and, and it's kind of like that whole irony. You know, you're chasing that it's so that true. facade of success and. You know, in the end, I, I think I, I find more acceptance from from a black gay guy who, in real life, I would mock as a character. It turns out he understands me more than than those realtors out there who I'm trying to chase acceptance sure. uh, uh, from. You know, yeah. and, and I think that's kind of like that whole glue, as, as Smitty said earlier, that that kind of keeps it together in that constant battle of mm -hmm. we all want to be loved mm -hmm. for, for who we are, but we all know where we're imperfect, and and so struggling with that, I think, in in real life and as characters. Mm -hmm. Is very exposed in this show. Yeah. It's it's very exposed, you know. Uh, so he, he with his writing, he doesn't play it safe at all. Like he takes how he knows me in real life, and really exposes those parts. And, and you know, acting those acting those parts when you're doing a fictional character is one thing. You know, you you transfer it and find a way to, to do it and justify. It. But when you know it's based on you. <laughs> It's uncomfortable. It's crazy, crazy vulnerable. Like, that's it. I'm, you all, wake up. I'm all method now. <laughs> I'm all method now. <laughs> when you wake up and you spend the whole day trying to hide those things, yeah. and, and, and here you're putting all the energy into exposing them, you know, because right. it, it, it's, it's hard. It, it's, it's, very, it's very uncomfortable, very hard, and it, and it makes for good laughs. Sometimes you, know? you realize, like, 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 but you, you realize, like, I'm not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm to get there, yeah. <laughs> And the waiter, 
doesn't know what to make of it because he can tell we're best buddies, but right. he just doesn't know how to respond. Yeah, well, I've already told him once the show gets picked up, they're gonna have to talk to me for my people. <laughs> <laughs> people so, yeah. so, so, so I mean, there's no other last time here. That'd be awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> Well, you guys, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.